So, Jeff, I'll start with you. Quite simply, how significant are these changes? I, this is huge for the sport. This is a major change from where we are today uh, after trying something at the All-Star Package, trying something at, at the Xfinity level, and then using all of the technology that's available to NASCAR today that never has been before because of uh, the, the OEMs making available the simulators, all their data that they can use to help develop a package, uh, and a package that NASCAR believes is going to put a better race on the racetrack so that when fans go to mile and a half racetracks, they see a good race. When they go to Phoenix, they see a good race and not take it out of the driver's hands. That's a major key. So uh, to, to do it this way, the way it was done throughout the whole industry, and the end result being closer racing uh, by, by reducing some power at places, by adding some drag, doing all those things together, this is a big change for the sport. Uh, I'm really interested to watch. There's some racetracks I know that it's going to be better at. There's no doubt in my mind it's going to make a better race at Indy. It's going to make a better race at Charlotte. Uh, there's some other racetracks I feel good about. You know, there's some other tracks that I just don't know. And I, I think it's, you know, the, the whole industry is that same way. I don't know about Atlanta. I don't know how it's going to affect it at Atlanta, but it's going to be fascinating to watch and see who can figure it out. Because it's still going to be a race. I mean, somebody's still going to figure it out and do it better than anybody else. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, one size rarely fits all. And you heard the question from Nate. There was a conversation that we we're going to have multiple different rules for multiple different venues to try to provide the best racing. And I think when you really get down to the, the nuts and bolts of that, while it seems great, it's not really reality. Because I'm not sure that we have enough of a business model to support that. The teams can't support that. And in the end, we have to have great teams. We have to have great drivers. And we have to have a business model that encourages them to be in the sport. And I think that's kind of how it's trended to this. Um, it is definitely not consistent all year long. Those two different engine combinations will be a big variation from track to track. Um, and the downforce, while they have all the same components, I think that they will race different. So when you talk about the rules package, I looked a little bit different than the NASCAR graphic. The way I look at it is this. You're going to have a big spoiler splitter and radiator pan. That, that's really in the minutia. What's that really mean? A lot of downforce. These cars are going to have a lot of downforce because of that. We're going to have a couple different engine configurations. The 750 horsepower, that's what we run this year. There are already tapered spacers on the cars this year. Currently in 2018, we're going to continue to run that at the short tracks and the road courses. Reduced horsepower at Darlington and all the bigger tracks. And then aero ducts. Anytime you don't need cooling to the brakes, you're going to see the aero ducts at all the big tracks. We saw them in the Xfinity Series. I thought the Xfinity race at uh, Indianapolis was outstanding, and that's the type of racing I expect this package to present. Carol, one thing that this package is not intended to do, and I think the big misconception about this package is that Talladega, that Daytona wants to, that, that, that the guys in Daytona with NASCAR want to create pack racing. They want racing like we see at Daytona and Talladega, and that's not what the objective is here. The objective is certainly to get the drivers closer together, certainly to put the drivers in a position where they can be aggressive and make passes. Uh, it, but it's not to create more Daytona races and Talladega races. And I think whenever somebody here is reducing power, that's immediately what goes to their mind. But uh, NASCAR made a great point today, and they're 100% right. You know, power, downforce, drag, all those things work together. And you can go to Daytona with 550 horsepower, which is a, which is a lot more power yeah. than, than what they currently have, and run the same speed, depending on what kind of drag the cars make. So. All those things work together, but there is no intention from NASCAR uh, in working with this package to create pack racing like we see at restricted plate races, what currently is restricted plate races. Well, I'd be very vocal if that was the goal because I still want to see the best teams and best drivers win. I mean, Dale Jarrett, you and I, when we race against one another, when I was with Jeff Gordon, you were in the 88, I'm guessing 700, 750 horsepower is what we had. And when you look at the lap times, they have been going down significantly. They're two, two and a half, three seconds faster at Darlington than when you and I were battling for Southern 500 wins. So at some times you just have to correct purely for technology. Yeah, you're exactly right. There, there's so many layers to this, and I'm not going to get in. They did a great job of explaining all of that. What does it mean for the drivers here? And, and I think I, I've said for a long time that speed doesn't always equate to better racing. So sometimes you're just so much on that edge that it can't create the side-by-side -side racing, which is what this sport was built on. Now, we're not, again, as Jeff Burton just pointed out, not looking for pack racing, but we hear these drivers talk about so many times as they get closer to another car, they can't get any closer than 
than that. Even though they may be faster, they can't get to that rear bumper. We're trying to do things here that might help in that type of a situation. It, it, and the, something that I heard from the drivers when this all started to be talked about, and I'm not going to point out uh, exactly who said that. We'll hear from the drivers this weekend, I feel quite certain, when they get to Dover and start getting questions about this. But one thing that they talked about was they want to be relevant. They want to be important, and they were afraid it was taking it somewhat out of their hands. This is going to bring, it's always skill sets that direct different drivers have to have. Some drivers do great on the short tracks. Others are great road racers. Others love the, the plate tracks and win their races there. Others are better on the mile and a half and two mile racetracks. So it's always a different skill set. And, and, you know, as, as Tony Stewart and Jeff Gordon and Kyle Larson and others came from different backgrounds of, of racing on dirt and things, they drove different type of cars there. So they had to adjust to the cars that had bigger wings, that had bigger engines, and do things differently there. They're going to be having to adapt to something that's different here. But I really believe all this is done. I applaud NASCAR for doing something, looking to the future, not waiting around. This had to be done. It was never going to get cheaper to do all of this for the teams. So the drivers are, again, they're going to be put in different situations than what they have been, but they will adapt to that. And I think that changes will be made when necessary. And so uh, I really believe that this is something that's going to be great for the future uh, of NASCAR racing. It, it had yeah, to, yeah, DJ. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. I'm sorry, Carolyn. D, I want to I want to uh, address what DJ said because I, I agree with him 100. percent I, I and I want to tell the fans at home. You know, when 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 you watch a truck race, right? <laughs> yeah. Or you watch an Xfinity race, they don't run the same power as a Cup car. And when you watch a truck race, that is essentially kind of the package. It's not the package by any means, but we think about it: lower horsepower, higher drag. And when I watch these races and the race is over, I don't think. Well, golly, that guy's not a very good driver, right? They get after it. They race hard. They go at it from the time they drop the green flag because the package requires them to do that. And that's going to be more like what we're going to see in the Cup Series next year. That's my opinion. That's what I believe what's going to happen. So I don't look at that Truck Series. And, and by the way, show me in the Truck Series all of the people that win all these races all the time that aren't good drivers. <laughs> like, I don't see it. Like, I see people that are, win these truck races that are really good race car drivers. So... I just think that's that's what we're going to see. I don't believe that we're taking that the the uh, the ability to win races is being taken out of the drivers' hands because of this package. If anything, I think it is going to, as Dale said, it's going to be a different skill set. But you're still the guy with the most skill is always going to have an advantage, and that's no different going into next year. Well, and the argument is speed. Some of the most captivating races we see throughout the year are some of the slowest. I'll go to Eldora on the dirt. It's probably the slowest truck race we'll see all year long. Martinsville, one of the slowest racetracks we go to, yet the racing is spectacular. Just this last week at the Roval, that infield section is one of the slowest sections of every racetrack we go to all year long. So, you know, speed is great, and we throw these numbers around. Carolyn, I've never gone, or I've definitely never driven over about 120 <laughs> miles an hour. So who am I to say we need to run 170 versus 190? As long as the racing is more entertaining for me to watch and the best drivers still have the biggest advantage because they're the most talented, then I'm a fan of whatever the rules may be. I was thinking about the Roval when you started making that point, Steve, because that was extremely exciting. But the thing I was going to ask DJ, and now I actually just want to ask you, DJ said this was something that ultimately was going to have to be done. And I think the most compelling question that Nate Ryan asked Steve O'Donnell was the simplest one, which is why is this decision being made? I mean, from your viewpoint, he mentioned tires and he mentioned the desire to push things forward and giving this back to the drivers, putting it back in their hands. Do you think this is a decision that ultimately had to be made? Is this where everything was heading? Well, I think, you know, it's a little bit of a cliche, but in hockey, they always say you have to skate to where the puck's going, not where the puck is currently. And I think this is NASCAR having the vision to get out in front of it, and there's not one answer. This decision helps Goodyear, a very important partner. It helps the race fan. That's probably the number one concern. It also helps multiple times. Steve O'Donnell today said more OEMs, more manufacturers. Toyota, Ford, and Chevrolet are huge in this sport. They are the lifeblood of the sport. And what I understand is going this direction with this amount of horsepower and this type of rule package perhaps will add some the opportunity for new manufacturers. So it's a, it's a long-winded answer, Carolyn, but I think the truth is there are many reasons why change was needed.
Yeah, and, and to expand on that a little bit, fans might say, well, why do we need more manufacturers? If more, if more manufacturers want to get involved, that brings more money in to more teams. So right now, where Joe Gibbs Racing is the Toyota group that we look at, and Hendrick Motorsports has a lot of the Chevrolet money that is there, uh, Penske and, and Stuart Haas has that Ford money. Well, if we split that out, then some of these teams that aren't getting a lot of money from these, uh, from these manufacturers because the most money is being spent right there, you spread that out, that makes them or gives them the opportunity to be able to spend more money and be more competitive so that brings more people into the mix.